Hello. 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 I was going to slowly eat a sandwich in front of you guys and not talk for like two minutes. No. <laughs> that was Kev's idea. That's why I didn't do it. Sorry, Andy. Go. I have extra sandwiches. I need to get rid of. It's it's up there. It's roast pork with broccoli rob and some garlic. That's what you're smelling, oh, you know? that's that's from Philly? It's from Haley's. Uh. Apparently, that's a good place to eat in Philadelphia. Built on me. Or a comment. Down the street. Good, good comments too. Yes. All right. Um, yeah, I don't have a good way to start this, so I'll just tell a quick joke. Yeah. I saw that Captain Phillips movie recently, the one oh. with Tom Hanks where he gets, you know, beaten up by Somali pirates and kidnapped. I think it's kind of funny. They actually keep to piracy in the real world pretty, pretty accurately in that movie. Those pirates came in on a boat that wasn't flying a Jolly Roger. It was flying a 1990 Buffalo Bills World Champions t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they weren't exactly. <laughs> I got a clap from Dan. <laughs> Do dream. <laughs> I'm in. Everybody just keep laughing. <laughs> yeah, and they, they weren't actually. Um, they did a pretty good job with that, though. It was pretty scary when those guys came on the boat and he's all like, I'm decapitated now. And Tom Hanks is like, oh, I'm a terrible actor. <laughs> <laughs> but those guys, those guys weren't on the boat just for the money, okay? They. It's tough in Somalia. They need things there. It's been a long time since they've been introduced to the civilized world. They, they weren't really just looking for the money. I mean, they wanted the money. But they also wanted that cassette single of Genesis's I Can't Dance <laughs> that Tom Hanks had in the tape deck that they would play when other pirates would come close to make them go away. Yeah. They didn't realize that's pirate bait out in Kenya, wherever the hell they're from. <laughs> uh, yeah, great. Um, so anyway. Was I gonna talk about? Oh yeah, so uh, I had a I had a pretty funny experience recently. Uh, my sister got a new television, and uh, since I'm the man that does things in my family, uh, I got the phone call. Can you please come over and help me mount this television? Not a big deal. I've done this a million times, but I didn't have the equipment that I needed. I had to go to the hardware store because I needed a stud finder because you have to drill the mounts. Yeah, exactly. Mount stud finder. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know how it works. Right. This is, this is where this is going, Matt. Oh, I mean, poop. Poop. I, I, I wanted to make sure that everybody knew who I was talking to. It's okay. Thanks, douchebag. Anyway. Just make sure you introduce me to your parents like that. Poop. What? I'm going to take your Wait a minute. No, this is a perfect opportunity. We have a room full of people. Let's pick a new nickname for poop. What do Poop pee? No. no. Wonder box. No, he's like. Wonder box? Yeah. Wonder box. I like Wonder box. Matt How about a nice guy? Matt Lock? No, Matt Lock. He's 30. He's 30. Oh, just oh, Matt Lock? Matt Lock. All right, Matt Lock. Fuck oh, you, Matt Lock. You're a dick. Shut up and stop interrupting the comedians, Matt Lock. It's a horrible thing to do. We lose our train of thought and then I ramble. Can we go home unemployed? No. But you can call me unemployed. So I almost did. So anyway. <laughs> Alright, that's enough of that. Everybody shut up for the rest of my set. There'll be a prima donna up here. I'm gonna fucking walk out if you people talk. This is some bullshit. I'm not. <laughs> Easy Dave Chappelle. Hey. So anyway. I had to go to the hardware store to get a stud finder so I could mount this stupid TV on the wall. And I was a little embarrassed because when I got there, they only had one brand. And on one side it said Stanley. Not bad, right? It's like, this is a personable stud finder. I know who my stud finder is. But on the other side, it said, it said, Fat Max Big Stud. <laughs> And I immediately got uncomfortable because I got a boner. <laughs> and that was really confusing. I didn't really know what was happening. But uh, I, I just stood there looking at this thing, and I, I was like, Fat Max Big Stud from Stan. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> If you need to change a tire and find a stud, the Fat Max Big Stud from Stan. <laughs> like, they could have gotten really creative with that. <laughs> like, gone real subversive with it and bought, like, an ad on the Super Bowl. Just 15 seconds, it shows this model guy, like, super all hulked up. And he walks over to a wall and he just puts it on the wall and he goes, Fat Max Big Stud. <laughs> Ensuring all of your projects are well hung. Million dollar idea. Yeah. Or it could be 
be like it could be like an app you could install on your smartphone that's kind of like Grinder. <laughs> Fat Max Big Stud, <laughs> helping you locate and drill the thickest studs. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so, um... Why is this moving? <laughs> so anyway, speak... <laughs> Something's going on. <laughs> we spent enough time with you to know what Grinder is, Gabe. <laughs> but, uh, speaking of studs, have you guys been following what's going on in Russia? With Vladimir Putin turning into a supervillain right before everybody's <laughs> eyes? <laughs> that guy's a fucking stud. Yes. For real. Like riding around bareback on a horse in front of our president. He's like, he's like, oh, what, are you waiting for pool? I'm going to go swim in river. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> it's like, holy shit. Dude, for a guy that swims, like, naked in the river, I don't understand why he hates gay people. It's really weird. You'd think he'd be on the fringe there, but apparently that's Russian. <laughs> Fucking strange stuff. But that guy's really scary, and he is turning into a supervillain, like, right in front of our eyes. I hope comic book writers are, like, paying attention to what's happening in Russia right now. Because there is a fucking massive story arc unfolding right in front of our eyes. You're gonna see, like, ten years from now, after we assassinate that guy, or whatever happens, not that I really know what's going on, but however this conflict comes to its natural resolution, like, ten years after that, there's gonna be a huge story arc in comic books. Because that guy's a fucking supervillain, and he's not, he's not your average run-of-the-mill supervillain. He's really fucked up. He's a crossover villain. You need, like, the X-Men and the Avengers. <laughs> it might get bad enough that they have to call in the Fantastic Four. <laughs> Somebody needs to go super stretchy while I invisible. Flame on! <laughs> Those guys need to join the party because Putin is out of his fucking skull. Like, he's, there's, he's got so much going for him that makes him scary. He's, he's one of the three wealthiest people on the planet. That's a real thing. <laughs> there are seven billion of us, and he's in the top three. <laughs> and he hates you. <laughs> like, someone in the top three has an opinion about you, and it's not good. <laughs> he doesn't like you, right? And he's got, he's got the, the full might of the Russian military. He's got, he's got a defensible position. He's got economic sanctions. He's got money. He's got geopolitical power. He's fucking scary. That guy's really scary. He's Lex Luthor on crack. <laughs> and he's young. He's like 45 and he's in great shape. He swims in a fucking river. <laughs> that guy's not gonna die anytime soon. He has long-term arch-villain rival status. <laughs> he's a very dangerous man. It's a very dangerous man. And there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, we can look over there and we can see all the garbage that's going on. And, oh, and then he invades Crimea, which I keep confusing with Samaria because that's where Conan's from. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all a very confusing, very, very confusing uh, kind of situation. But, um, you know, there's, there's not really much we can do about it. You know, the military's not going to help and the government's not going to help and the Euro Europe's fucking scared of him. I mean, the best we can do is... Hope karma catches up with us. <laughs> like, what the fuck else are we gonna do? <laughs> hey man, that guy's a dick. <laughs> well, <we're there. laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. The karma's gonna catch up with him. They're in a murder. Okay. <laughs> I hope karma catches up with him. This would be the only way we're getting out of this one alive. <laughs> oh, microphone, stop it! Come back up here. <laughs> now it's too high. Oh. Fat Max Big Just like you. <laughs> the Fat Max Big Stud. Getting in your face when you don't want it to. <laughs> but uh, I actually had my own run-in with Karma last week. Um, it, was a, it was a really interesting story. It kind of happened out of nowhere. Um, I, I work at Best Buy. And uh, I'm, I work in the clearance room, which basically means I'm the, I'm the tard that sits in the room with the lights out in the back. <laughs> We're all like the open box refrigerators <laughs> and like dishwashers without any kick plates are. You can go back there and buy a microwave as long as you don't need a door. 
it's like, it's the real shit place in the store. Nobody likes it. Nobody likes going back there. <laughs> that's the place, that's the place where if you have that Motorola Razor, not the new ones, but the flip phone from like seven years ago, I have a case for that. Come see me. I've been trying to get rid of that fucking thing forever. But um, I was I was sitting back in my little lair, like a bridge troll, lurking lurking under the the lights that are out in the room for no reason. And whoa! I thought a garage door opener was going up. I was like, man, when did they install that? Oh, it must be one of those awnings that you put on the back of the house with the button that makes it roll up. It's wonderful for the thumb up. I don't know what happened there. That that makes dead. Yeah. <laughs> Use your stud finder to mount the awning. <laughs> the stud finder will mount the awning for you. Uh, no, I thought I could rip off an eyelash, so I'm trying to make sure. <laughs> but anyway, I'm standing back in my little cave, and uh, this guy walks in, and he, I instantly identify this guy as a hippie. Instant, immediate. The, the smell preceded him. That was the first. <laughs> And then the second thing, there was a visible evidence of him in a haze glistening with THC crystals floating through the air. And uh, it was a purple haze, by the way. That's, that's kind of how I knew. Right. There would be no other colors. No, no other colors for haze. And, uh, and, he, and he, he's wearing... <laughs> no, I'm not lying about this. I'm t I have to tell you that in advance. This has really happened. He's wearing sandals in January with no socks. <laughs> He doesn't care. He, he doesn't care. I think it would more insulting if he was wearing socks with sandals. Yes, it would have been more offensive, but still, was, you knew he was a hippie. And he had on two pairs of pants, so he had on a pair of track pants. And then over top of his track pants, he had on baggy pajama pants. But one baggy pajama pant leg was blue. And it had lighter blue donuts in the Homer Simpson style on it. And the right leg was yellow, a very fuzzy yellow, by the way. Like, noticeably fuzzier than the left leg. And it had bananas on it. And I was like, this guy's fucking weird. <laughs> so, because you could see both pairs of pants. The pajama pants, the pajama pants were sagging over the gym pants. He had on two T-shirts, clearly identified by the fact that one was ripped almost entirely down the middle. <laughs> over his two T-shirts, he had on not one, not two, but three hoodies, <laughs> and he was wearing three hats. Poor guy is cold. Yeah, not not baseball caps, not not baseball caps. These were like wool, like pullover caps. He had on a like a like a pullover cap, and then a pullover cap on his pullover cap, and then he had one with ears. Oh. Okay, of course. Super crunchy hippie. Very crunchy. So he turns around and I look at the back of his jacket. And on the back of his jacket, he has a picture of Deadpool, a comic book character that I like. And uh, I, I see his jacket, and I said, hey, man, your jacket's really cool. <laughs> Pretty innocuous. And this guy turns around, and he walks over to me really quietly, and really slow, like strangely slowly. <laughs> and he does one of these. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and, and he comes over to the counter, and he's like... Thanks, man. I made this. And I was like, I was like, okay, cool. And he's like, yeah, I taught myself how to like screen print clothes, and I made this. Right? So I was like, right, yeah. I was like, well, that's 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 really cool. And he's like, do you make things? And I was like, no, I don't make things. I'm sorry, I know a lot of people that make things, but I don't make things. He goes, oh, that's too bad, man. Because if you made things, we could have traded. <laughs> this is a totally other conversation. Man, I'm like, where the fuck is this guy that I'm not? Is he standing on the other side of a portal in like a Middle Eastern bazaar? 1200? It's like, oh, here's the Holy Grail. I made this. <laughs> Hide it in the desert. Call Sean Connery. <laughs> so, so I'm like, no, man, I'm sorry. I don't make stuff. I'm sorry we can't trade. And he's like, oh, that's cool, man. And he just turns around and walks away. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that was really weird. And about a minute goes by, and he 
He's like all the way across the room. I can barely see him because it's so dark in there. <laughs> and <laughs> he turns around and he starts walking back. And he, he comes back and he walks up to the table with like this real, he's got a change in his step now. He's no longer tentative. He's really purposeful, you know. Comes up and he's like, and he, and he posts up at the counter and he looks at me and he makes eye contact, which is the first weird thing because now he's like staring at me <laughs> like this. It's really weird, right? If it goes on longer than that, it keeps getting weirder. I can keep this up. Uh, I blinked first. Like. But anyway, he makes this like really serious eye contact with me. And he, he goes, you know what, man? It's fucking really cool that you like had the balls to say something nice about my shirt, man. And I was like... You're welcome. <laughs> He's like, you know, people don't have it in them nowadays to like be nice to other people. And it's like really shitty. And you know, it's super cool. He's like getting mad now. And he's like, he's like real with conviction. He's like, it's super cool that you said something nice about my shirt, man. <laughs> and he reaches up onto the second hat in the stack. And he pulls off this pin. For those of you that can't see it, this is a pin of a whale. It is a white whale. It is a sparkly white whale with a blue and yellow striped underbelly. It has a unicorn horn with blue, yellow, purple stripes on it, and purple, and out of its blowhole is coming blue, yellow, and purple. It's, it's literally spewing rainbows. So he looks at me, and he's, he's straight on it. He's, he's like, so cool that you helped me out, man. I feel really good. And he's like, this is my friend, Andy Narwhal. <laughs> this is my friend, Andy Narwhal. Wow. I made him. <laughs> Thank you for the compliment. And he, and he puts it on the counter turns around with this heel-toe pivot. He just goes like, whoosh. <laughs> and then he's gone. <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> and I thought about it, but I thought about it for a minute, and I was like, this is the definition of good karma. I did something nice for him. He recognized and acknowledged that I did something nice for him and rewarded me. I won a pin from a hippie with a compliment. If that's not fucking good karma, I don't know what is. So I'm gonna put my pin on and get out of here. Thank you very much.